What's up guys, my name is Calvin Wiley and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new, if you could please hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell icon and turn on post notifications, that way you're alerted every time that I post a new video. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over the water scorpion, basic care and also general information about the insect. Now, to many of you, the water scorpion may be of a new insect that you have never seen or heard of, and if that's the case, then I'm super happy to be able to show you guys what a water scorpion actually is. So without further ado, let's just get right into the video. So this right here is a water scorpion. Some of you may have not seen or even heard of this insect before, and that is because they're not, I guess you could say, very popular in terms of keeping as pets in the insect community. But in my opinion, they are very fascinating and also very easy to keep pets. The water scorpion, which this might be of a disappointment to some, but it's actually not a scorpion. It's an aquatic insect that lives pretty much most of its life underwater. The water scorpion gets its name from this long, thin appendage, which is located on the back end of its abdomen located right here where my index finger is pointing. See that long thin appendage? That appendage is called its siphon. Now because water scorpions live and thrive underwater, the siphon acts as a breathing tube. Now it may look like just one straight line, but it's actually two straight lines, two lines put together forming this long thin tail like appendage. And so what the water scorpion, oh, actually, wow, this is actually pretty cool. So I was gonna explain the water scorpion uses its siphon as a breathing tube where it sticks it up under, uh, I'm sorry, out of water to take in oxygen to breathe. And that's actually what it's doing right now as I speak, so. And as you can see, he just lowered it back underwater. So they can breathe underwater for several minutes before taking in oxygen. And that's actually what it just did a few seconds ago. They'll stick it out from the water, absorb the oxygen, and then they'll bring it back down. So that was actually pretty cool that it did that as I was explaining it. Now you may be wondering why I'm not holding this creature like how I do in all of my other videos, and that is because the water scorpion, when it's out of water, it's actually pretty useless. They're not very good at walking on land, and they're extremely, extremely clumsy when out of water. It's, they're completely out of their element. But just to show you, just to give you a brief explanation of what I mean, um, just the visual, I will take the water scorpion out for a few seconds. So this is what the water scorpion looks like out of water. Now, they use their mid legs, which are the legs in the middle, and also their hind legs to walk. Their forelegs, they actually don't use for walking. Instead, they'll actually keep them up at all times. So their weight is kind of not evenly distributed because of that. They typically will tilt forward as they attempt to walk. But he's actually doing a pretty good job at holding its own, holding a, a pretty steady balance as he grasps onto my hand. I figured since I have the water scorpion out of water, this would be a perfect time to explain how water scorpions catch their prey. So water scorpions are predatory insects that will feed on a variety of small insects. Uh, they have also been known to feed on tiny tadpoles as well. The way that water scorpions catch their prey is almost like mantises, their forelegs are raptorial, and what raptorial basically means is that they, they almost act as like a vice grip, like a, like a grasping method. So if you've ever seen mantis uh, forelegs, you know how they snatch their prey. Their, their forelegs are designed to grasp and hold prey down from escaping. Now I'm gonna try to show you what they look like up close. There we go, as you can see, it's foreleg is open. It's kind of blurry. Excuse the blurriness. I'm going to try to get a better angle at this. Alright, so this is exactly what I was referring to. See how they're open right now? And now it just closes them back up. So those forelegs will grasp onto prey and will hold on to it. 
preventing it from escaping. There we go. Almost looks, it's almost like an underwater mantis. Now once the water scorpion has grabbed a hold of its prey, it then uses its beak-like mouth part, which is called a rostrum. Uh, let me just show you its rostrum really quick. So this rostrum is uh, where my thumb is pointing to, that beak-like mouth part in the, in the center of its head right there. That is its rostrum, that's its mouth right there where I'm poking at. So what that mouth does is it actually pierces through the exoskeleton of its prey, which it then uses to inject saliva that is laced with venom. And what that venom does is it actually paralyzes the prey's body, leaving it completely immobilized and unable to escape. And then it also liquefies the insides of its prey's body. So it actually destroys the internal tissues and structures of the body of the prey. And then once those tissues have been uh, essentially liquefied, the water scorpion then uses its rostrum as a straw where it then drinks out the digestive uh, juices that it destroyed within its prey's body. And then what it leaves behind is basically a an empty shell of an insect or whatever it's feeding on. Now because of that, these guys are venomous, but they're ven- oh, and this is, yeah. As you can see, like I said in the beginning, uh, they're extremely clumsy out of water. But as I was saying, these guys are venomous, um, but I, I personally haven't heard anyone getting envenomated by a water scorpion uh, before. So as you can see, I'm handling it. It's not doing anything. Uh, so these guys are not prone to, to biting at all, from my experience at least. Water scorpions, when fully mature, do have wings. This one is an adult, the one that I'm holding. It has wings, it's kind of hard to tell, but those are wings right there. They're just overlapped and laid on top of each other. But, um, so if you're wondering if they can fly, yes, they can fly, but it is extremely rare when they do it. Water scorpions can commonly be found in freshwater ponds and also lakes. This one I, uh, I found at a lake not too long ago. Not only did I find this water scorpion, but I found two other water scorpion, literally just a couple inches apart from one another. So you can definitely find these guys um, in abundance in ponds and in lakes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just build a basic enclosure for this water scorpion and show you guys how to do it. And I'm also going to hopefully be able to get a feeding video as well. So let me just put this guy back and I will be going over how to build an enclosure for it. Now when housing a water scorpion, I personally like to use something as simple as this, which is a critter keeper. So the first thing that I'm going to add are some leaves. I'm just going to cover the base of the enclosure with some leaves. Just like that. And then the next step is to add some plants. Now you don't have to use real plants. These are fake plants. Uh, I just find it a lot more convenient and very easy to use. Um, but your water scorpion needs something to anchor itself uh, onto when it's resting in the water, especially um, when you go to feed it. They do free float occasionally, but they usually latch themselves onto something. And so just putting in uh, flowers such as this or even like sticks you could put sticks in the water as well your water scorpion will anchor itself on to whatever you put it in that's what they typically do in the wild water scorpions will typically anchor themselves on to plants or uh, just natural floating debris sticks you know etc whatever uh, is in the water that they're living in 
So this just kind of replicates their natural habitat. But for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna remove these flowers out. And the reason for that is because I'm going to put this in. So this will be in the middle of the enclosure. And as you can see, the flowers, or sorry, the leaves of these fake plants, um, the water scorpion will be able to anchor itself onto it um, as well. I'm just using this in a replacement of the flowers just so that it's easier to see uh, the water the water scorpion once I go to place the water in. All right, now the next step is to get some filtered water. Um, me personally, it's just a preference of mine. I like to use filtered water instead of tap water, but that is just my preference. So I'm just gonna pour that in. So you're gonna want the level to be um, about as high as the plants are. I mean, the plants are sticking out a little bit. That's, that's perfectly fine. Um, they don't have to be fully submerged underwater. But the leaves that I put in, the water scorpion will be able to latch onto those leaves that are afloat at the top here. And then also uh, the water scorpion will be able to latch onto uh, these fake plants as well. So um, it gives it a, a bit of a, like versatility to be able to hunt and to rest on to whatever it wants. And now I'm just gonna add the water scorpion to its new enclosure. So it's just chilling right now. These guys really don't move too much. Um, when they do move, it's typically very slow. But um, I'm gonna try to feed it right now. I know I just put it in its new enclosure, but I'm just going to try to shoot to see if it will accept food that I give it. So let me go get a cockroach right now. All right, let's see if the water scorpion will eat. There we go. Right, looks like it grabbed a hold of the cockroach. And so right now, it just pulled the cockroach close to its body so that it can inject it with its venom. So it's piercing its rostrum through its exoskeleton right now, injecting saliva laced with venom, which paralyzes its prey as well as destroys the internal tissues of its prey's body and then soon after that it'll then drink out its prey until there's nothing left inside To be honest, the cockroach will end up drowning before the venom even kills the cockroach. Oh, look at that, yeah. Oh, nice, I grabbed a hold of it. It's getting a better grip. It's got the cockroach by its legs. Yeah, it looks like the cockroach has drowned to death. Yeah, it's body switching. And right now it's poking its siphon out of the water to breathe. You can get a good video of that. Might be hard to see, but it's trying to breathe right now. It's poking it out of the water. So I'm gonna leave the water scorpion to its meal. But that is pretty much how you're gonna build the enclosure for the water scorpion. So that is going to conclude today's video. I really hope that my video might have been some help to um, many of you, or at least a few of you. 
who might have had some questions about the water scorpion or maybe you have wanted to keep one. So I hope this video was a great help and of value to you. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, if you guys could please follow me on Instagram, my Instagram is Kelvin Wiley, just my name. Uh, if you guys could please follow me on there, I'd really appreciate it. If you haven't already, please hit that like and also leave a comment. And subscribe if you haven't. Also hit the bell icon to turn on post notifications. That way you're alerted every time that I post a new video. So like I said, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, let me know if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below, and I will see you guys in the next video.